Hello and welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be reacting to Gary Hill being sacked by the fleet. Um, so yeah, so make sure you leave a like on the video, let, let me know your comments down below, uh, what you thought of the sacking and who you think should replace him. Um, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already, we've, uh, we're closed. I think we've got 4.5k, I'm not, not too sure. Um, but yeah, let's get straight into the reaction. So Gary Hill today has been sacked at 4.30, at 4 o'clock we just sound... We just signed Albie Morgan, which seemed like a good signing. Uh, he did look like a dead man walk-in on uh, Tuesday. Uh, we played a sort of different style to what we usually play. It was quite attacking and passing. Maybe what Kevin Watson has installed. Um, and maybe he was told beforehand on Tuesday that he would have been sacked anyway. Uh, and when he conceded in four games, four goals at home, it did seem like it was very, very likely. Um, obviously, we've been dreadful this season. We've got two wins from 16, which isn't good enough. We're two points adrift at the bottom of the league. We're six points adrift uh, of safety. Um, but is that all Gary Hill's fault? It's hard to really say. Uh, a lot of that is due to the doctor and the mess that he's left him. Um, granted, he, well, he did sign his own players, um, but I, w I don't think it was... He had about two players going into July. So it was about getting play ball through the door. Uh, and it was a real rush job. Any other club would, sit, would struggle if you had to replace the entirety of your squad. Um... And yeah, it's been a real struggle this season. Obviously, it's been hard to watch. Um, another Tuesday night was another example of that. Um, obviously, really disappointed that, that we lost the game. Um, you know, I'm, you know, it's all about the, the appointment now. Um, who we're going to get in? I'm not too sure at the moment. But you know, let's look back, look back at Gary Hill's time at Fleet. He came in in November time after Darren McMahon was sacked. To be fair, he wasn't liked by the fans. He hadn't really had a great record beforehand. Uh, and he was kind of basically known in non-league for headbutting uh, another manager, which led him to having a lengthy break. But he did have a really impressive spell at Woking. Uh, at this point, everyone wanted McMahon out. And I'll mention that later in, in the video. Everyone wanted McMahon out. Uh, he was really, really struggling. We were 16th in the league with a massive budget. Uh, and we had 10 staff. Um which then Gary Hill came in, we had an okay start, uh, we got through to, we played against Cheltenham, we done okay in the FA Cup, uh, we started getting some good results and had a really good December, um, and had a really good sort of, um, when he first came in, we done really, really well. Uh, ongoing at this time, he was still, obviously, people were getting paid late, uh, he had to reduce the budget as well, we had to sell players, uh, and reduce massively the staff that was involved at the club, which needed to happen, otherwise I think next year we are making such massive losses that the doctor would have just cut his ties and we probably would have been left adrift and the club would have gone under. Um, so for that, and the fact that we were improving up the league as well, we kept going up the league, winning matches, uh, was, uh, was a, a testament to, to Gary Hill. Uh, we then went on a poor, a poor sort of run, we beat Leighton Orient 2-0, which is probably uh, one of the best games I've seen at Stonebridge Road in a long, long while, and the amount of people there, the amount of away fans were there, an incredible atmosphere that day. Um, we then went a little bit of a bad spell, um, and then we had a we had that incredible day at Maidstone. We won two 0 We had a lot of home games uh, winning up to that. Uh, we then beat Wrexham, where the players didn't go off the pitch. It didn't even warm up. Uh, we didn't know if the game was going to be on. And obviously, Gary Hill then got a result. He still put the players out there. They still were playing for him uh, and playing for the pride of the of the club. Um, and he he then done really really well. Uh, and obviously, missed out on the playoffs in the end, which is disappointing. Um, but he stayed with the club. He probably could have moved on because he went from 16th to 8th. Uh, with everything going on, he reduced the staff, he reduced the wages, he got rid of players that shouldn't have been there, he got rid of staff that shouldn't have been there, and he kept going on when players weren't getting paid. Probably he wasn't getting paid, and he kept going on. So you have to thank him for that. Um, he then, in the summer, instructed by the doctor, he had to get rid of players that were on massive contracts and he may have offered contracts, but they would have been too low, and the players that would have directed them, yes. even if he did offer the players, they wouldn't have stayed anyway. So then you're in a fighting game of trying to keep four or five players, and you've got players that are on big contracts that you're trying to sell, whilst bringing players in, and obviously it's really hard to sign players, um, due to the fact that we had, it was so hard to sign players, basically, because um, well, our reputation, not due to Gary Hill. Gary Hill obviously improved that reputation because we got into eighth, but because of the doctor paying late uh, and all the shenanigans going around the club. So that wasn't that wasn't Gary Hill's fault. Uh, and he, that left him with a real small pool of players. 
and especially the fact that we were in we only had two players going into July so it was even smaller so it was very hard to get good players in and that is a real worry at the moment we don't have the quality even if you change the manager to really stay up they are nationally experienced players but a lot of them are sort of rejects and they go from club to club so it's going to be really hard for the new manager coming in obviously looking at this season we did get we did get a squad together that was okay and we've done you know all right this season oh, not all right this season we've done terrible this season uh, we lost the first five games of the season and the more worrying fact is that we haven't actually shown the effort and obviously a lot of that's due to the players i'm not going to put this hole in gary hill and obviously the i don't think the doctor's been the doctor hasn't been at fault this season he's paid the wages he's uh given them the money to sign players and stuff um but the fact is that you know it's obviously very hard if you're keeping three or four players from the previous season um, and we really struggled the first five games. Uh, there wasn't really any fight, and it was, it was so, so hard to watch. Uh, and we weren't even getting close in games. Um, and yeah, obviously, we've, we did start to see some promising results. We drew against Dover, we drew against Woking, we beat Barnet, and we haven't really built on that. And I think in the last three games, we've lost to Torquay, we've lost to Wrexham, we've lost to Harrogate. In all three of those games, we haven't even been close to, we couldn't have said, you know, we haven't even been close to getting anything from the games, like the first five games. And it's really, really disappointing because I really like Gary Hill as a man because he works really hard. He cared about the club. He cared about the finances of the club. And people saying he's killing the club. He's our worst ever manager. Really need to look at what he done last season and what the people saying that he's uh, and that his style of football. I don't. I couldn't care less about the style of football at Fleet as long as we're winning matches. I don't remember ever being liquid football and Barcelona football at Fleet anyway. Um, and people moaning about the style of football this season is completely irrelevant. I don't remember maybe McMahon in the National League South, but in the National League there was still quite a lot of hoofing football from McMahon, who had us in who had us in 18th when he left, and Gary Hill got us to eighth. So people do need to remember that fact that he did re rebuild and help restructure the club, and also make sure we're in a very stable position and didn't get relegated, which could have happened last season. Um, and obviously with the financial stuff, we've rebuilt. Not great. The players aren't. Not incredible, but um, yeah, as I said, I just want to thank Gary Hill. Decent, you know, it's certainly not his fault. You know, this is not ideal club to be managing at the moment with what's going on. Um, and I just generally thank him for what he done last season, and obviously putting a squad together and putting a group of players together and persuading players who are nationally experienced and who have just let him down completely, um, who are national league experienced and should be playing so, so much better than them for themselves and not only for Gary and for the club and for the supporters this season. So it's certainly not Gary Hill's fault for the whole of the season. Um, and obviously there's lots of other factors as well. Um, as I said, yeah, really fa just massive thank you for Gary Hill, what he's done. And obviously disappointed for the way it's ended, but it's never really ends nice in non-league football. Um, and I wanted to, I think he, he, hopefully he'll be able to move on to another National League club, which I think he'll he will be able to do um, in, in due course. Um, but yeah, um, with with how poorly we've done this season, um, he maybe we did need to, to change things, which I, I agree with, uh, with how badly we've, we've been. You know, we have had to rebuild the squad, but we shouldn't be where we are in the league. Um, but yeah, that, now we know, go on to who could replace him. Uh, I picked out three managers, and some of them have been seen around Fleet. Um, the, my ideal one is Jay Saunders. Jay Saunders, of course, managing Maidstone, was sacked early on in the last season where he had Maidstone in 20th, one of the lowest budgets in the league. He's currently at Margate, um, who may be, because they're in the 7th tier, you may be able to price Jay Saunders out of Margate. And considering you have a big budget, Although Jason, Jay Saunders does have ties with Maidstone, he has played for Gravesend and Northfleet before, so I don't think it's going to complete um, slide away from uh, away from Maidstone. So I don't think it's going to be like that. I don't think they'll all call a mistake or something. They still get a good reception going back from Maidstone. Although Margate do have a big budget for the league, he is building kind of a project. Um, if we were to get uh, Jay Saunders, that would be a massive, and I think well, it would rejuvenate the club and it would really get people back at the club. Um, I'm wanting to watch the football and I think everyone would back that, that management appointment. Uh, another one, Steve Lovell, was seen on Tuesday, of course, sat by Gillingham. I think this could be a really, really good um, appointment. Um, Steve Lovell worked under really, really tough condi conditions at Gillingham with a really, really low budget at Gillingham. Uh, he kept them up comfortably. 
uh, at the end of last season with a low budget and fans against the chairman and again rejuvenate the club as a club legend uh, that would be a great signing I don't know how much he'd cost he wasn't too cheap he wasn't too expensive at Gillingham um, and he sort of got that good uh, knowledge he probably hasn't got the best he probably got some decent contacts as well uh, as w to add to that and maybe a little bit of link with Gillingham with loans and stuff maybe signing could be really really useful for us and I think Steve Level would be in one of those uh, manageable appointments that would be nice to see uh, the third one, which is a bit more risky, is Steve McKim. Steve McKim is managing Tunbridge at the moment. He is, again, is another former Graves and North League player. Um, and he's doing a really, really good job at uh, Tunbridge. Obviously, the risk is he hasn't managed a full-time full -time club yet. He hasn't managed at this level before. Uh, or Obviously, Steve Love has managed higher. Um, and he hasn't been managing for that long of a period. But again, I still think we have that rejuvenating feel, uh, which hopefully we'll be able to see. Uh, the managers I don't want to be... We have highly linked with Steve King... Um, a lot of managers, sort of National League South quality, who have done okay with low budgets at getting into the playoffs. It's a very, it's a different ball game, I'm afraid. You know, um, you know, a National League. If they don't have the experience at National League level, um, and working, I think working at a small budget in the National League South and getting into teams into the playoffs is so, so, so much easier than doing it at National League level. I think the National League is so, so much more competitive than the National League South ever is. Uh, and the National League North, I think, is, is much more harder than the National League South itself. So getting a side into the playoffs, although it is a good achievement in the National League South, I don't think it is. Steve King is is an OK manager, but it's just a, basically a B-Tech version of Gary Hill, in my opinion. He doesn't really have experience at this level anyway. Um, so I would be pretty disappointed if that was, um, if that was the manager. Uh, saying that, he probably will be announced the manager. Um... But yeah, as I say, my ideal top three, if there was to be a top three, and they're pointing off Nathan Holt, is go after Jay Saunders. Contact Margate right now. How much is it to get Jay Saunders into the club? How much can we get him for? Uh, is he likely to come? Do we have to pay a fee for him? Do we have to? What sort of contracts do we need? That kind of stuff. Steve Lovell, he's free at the moment. He was at the game. Contact him. He's going to be a decent man. Uh, he's going to be know what he's doing. I think he'd be decent. And then if we want to go for a bit of wild card, if you can't get those two, think Steve McKim. Steve King is of I don't I don't really want him as a manager. Though he's experienced, he's got not really a lot of experience at this level, and yeah, he's one of the major one links. Um but what I do want to see is we do need a lot of wins. I, I saw a stat yesterday, we've got 30 games left, which doesn't which seems a lot of games, but it's not in hindsight when we've got to win 15 of them. We've got a current win ratio of 10%, and we've got up that to 50% just to stay in the division. But as I say, if you get two wins, if you beat Main, if you beat Chorley, if you get some results against Sutton, you build that momentum. Um, and yeah, I think this decision needed, I think hopefully a lot of people go to the game against Maidenhead, I'm gonna be going now. Um, and also, I've got to announce we, we've signed Albie Morgan on a month loan from, from Cholton, which is a massive signing. It's a massive statement for us. Uh, Albie Morgan is a really, really talented player. I've seen him play for Cholton a few times in the friendly against us. And for Charlton as well, he played in the playoffs. He's a really good player, a really young, talented player. So for him to be dropping down, not just to the National League, but to the bottom club in the National League, I really hope he can impress. Because I've, I've been one of the major critics of, of us this season is the centre mids. We've got no control. I think he's going to be able to dominate us in this league. And he's probably a cut above. Although he's only 19, he's got, he's got so much experience, not just in, the, in League One. He's played a few games in the Championship as well. So I think that's a really, really good signing. Um, but as I said, Kevin Watson, I think, is, is in charge at the moment. He could be an option as well. Um, but yeah, again, I think, as I said, basically to overview the video, thanks to Gary Hill, we've done a really good job. It's a fortunate circumstance he had this season. It was very, very hard for him to succeed this season. Unfortunately, he hasn't been able to do so. Um, but yeah, fingers crossed we do get the right appointment. Let me know who, who you think Fleet will get. Um, in the comments and please do not say Harry Wheeler because that, if that happens then I'm just going to I don't know what I'm going to do but please not Harry Wheeler um, uh, yeah let me know who you think uh, what you thought of the sacking as well um, but yeah that's basically my reaction I think as I said I could obviously everyone could see it coming um, I wasn't people saying uh, Gary out I do think he, he could have been given a little bit more time um, but when we've got people like Steve Lovell coming to the games there was obviously that certain option there um, but as I said the success of our manager is not due to his own ability. It's a lot of outside factors that affect 
Um, it was very hard for Gary Hill, but obviously with new fresh, of eye, new fresh eyes on this situation, hopefully the fleet can improve. We've got a massive game on Saturday against Maidenhead. That's a six-pointer. If we can get that win and we can get that boost going into, into some real big games against Sutton and Chorley and Chesterfield, who are all down there, and Woking in the FA Cup as well. So yeah, let me, as I said, let me know who you think, what you think of the sacking. Let me know who you think is going to come in. And yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already. And yeah, I'll see you later.